one of the augers used in today's lab is McConkie auger. This is a combination selective and differential medium. The McConkie auger contains the dye crystal violet as well as bile salts, and both of these inhibit the growth of gram-positive bacteria but permit most gram-negative bacteria to grow. It also has neutral red in the medium. So this is a plate of uninoculated McConkie auger. And as you can see, uh, it's kind of a reddish tinged auger. Now, in addition to selecting for gram negative bacteria, that is it lets gram negative bacteria grow and inhibits gram positives, it's also used to differentiate those gram negatives that ferment lactose from those that do not ferment lactose. If a bacterium strongly ferments lactose, such as Escherichia coli, then the acid that's produced as an end product of fermentation uh, eventually lowers the pH of the agar and the bacteria, and this causes the neutral red in the dye to be absorbed into the colonies, causing them to appear pink to red. And in addition, if there's strong fermentation, the bile salts in the agar precipitate out a solution, causing the agar to appear a bright pink and cloudy. You can see this around solid growth, such as we're seeing right here surrounding the growth. There's a nice pink halo or precipitate around the growth. We can also see that around the isolated colonies here. So when we see that dark pink precipitate or cloudiness surrounding the growth, that indicates strong fermentation of lactose. If the bacterium weakly ferments lactose, there's still enough acid to cause the colonies and the growth to appear pink to red, as we see with this Enterobacter orogenes. But notice there's no pink precipitate or cloudiness surrounding the growth. The agar uh, looks uh, relatively transparent surrounding the colonies. So we see pink colonies without the pink precipitation surrounding the growth. That would indicate weak fermentation. And finally, if the bacterium does not ferment lactose, such as this Proteus mirabilis, the colonies appear colorless, and the agar appears relatively transparent, kind of a yellowish tan color. So that would indicate no fermentation of lactose. So the McConkie agar selects for gram-negative bacteria and also differentiates those bacteria as to whether or not they ferment lactose. And this is another common medium that's used to help differentiate members of the bacterial family Enterobacteriaceae. But it's also equally good uh, at growing glucose non-fermenting gram-negative bacilli such as Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas does not ferment any sugars, so it would appear as a non-fermenter. One thing that's occasionally confusing to students is that keep in mind that we're differentiating glucose-fermenting gram-negative bacilli, that is the Enterobacteriaceae, from glucose non-fermenting gram-negative bacilli such as Pseudomonas. Now in that case, we're determining whether or not they ferment glucose. Glucose is not found in the McConkie agar. Lactose is present. So we can have no fermentation on the McConkie agar, but it could still easily be one of the Enterobacteriaceae. Some of the Enterobacteriaceae ferment lactose, some do not.